Welcome back. Before we head off to Seed Hollow Castle and try and stop all hell breaking loose, we should have a look at the Fate episodes that we've unlocked. So, back to Rackham here. We've got The Dream Lives On, Episode 6. So, I think that'll just be it. I want to have a look first before we do it. How, how far can we get into these? So, we can get to... We can get quite far, but you get three there with Eugen. Ferry. Got a boss fight. Yeah, that's it. We just got a boss fight. And Nyodaha. Yeah, it's just an explore. There's just a few things. Eugen seems to be the one that has the most. So I'm wondering if it's related to what's been happening. Anyway, Rackham. Episode 6, The Dream Lives On. Yes. Rackham, there you are. I've got huge news. Listen to this. It was clear from Kent's smile that the repairs on the Nautilus were going smoothly, thanks to a mechanic friend of his. Yes, I wonder who that could be. Well, ain't that something. Indeed. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't impressed. Those parts weren't the easiest to work with. Not bad, Miss Mechanic. Um, Rackham, sir? My friend told me she got the parts from a traveling skyfarer. Had three-day-old scruff and a little swagger to him. You wouldn't know anything about that, would you? No, no, ha <laughs> huh. Well, I keep my scruff in an elegant chin strap. Thank you very much. Not sure I sounded very convincing trying to play off his answer, but I'm a helmsman, not an actor. Ha, huh. but just another performance or two, and the Nautilus would be skybound once more. That's what we want to see. I, I was going to grab my drink and have a drink while he was talking, but then it ended. I felt like it should have been somehow related to what was going on. Like, why, why did we have to wait to do that? Like, we had to clear an astral's emotions. Why? I don't know. I don't know. Eugen, anyway. Episode 5, Rest in Peace. Get my drink now. Just as we arrived at the cemetery, the clouds opened up, unleashing a torrent of rain. The blue sky was gone, painted over by a steely, unforgiving gray. Looking around, I saw that there were others paying their respects at different plots. Like Karzeda, they probably lost loved ones to the storm. As soon as he laid eyes on the mound of earth in front of him, the dam broke. Karzeda's shoulders heaved with his sobs. Let it out, mate. Let it out. Why did I say those awful things? There were so many more important things I wanted to tell you, but I... He sank to his knees, crippled with grief. His fist beat at the earth, sending drops of muddy water splashing onto his face. I didn't want that to be our last conversation. If I hadn't blown up, if we hadn't fought, I... I only wanted to see you smile. But I made you cry. All I could do was watch over Karzeda as he poured out the feelings he'd held back for so long. <sighs> Let it out, son. It's the only way to get through it. Too right, mate. Too right. Alright, so. Episode 6. Carrying on her legacy. After the visit, we made our way to a tavern. We could hear the rain beating down on the establishment. It was still day, but the sky was dark as night. Garzeda ordered the stiffest drink they had and downed it in one gulp. My friend once showed me a flower and said that each one symbolizes something. At the time, I didn't get it and I had other things in my mind, so I never bothered looking it up. I... He shook his head saying that he'd wished he had treasured those small, everyday moments with her. Each word struck me like a blow, reminding me of my own failures. How am I supposed to live with this regret? It's like the storm outside, pounding on me until I give in and let it sweep me away. I mulled over his question for a while before opening my mouth. I'm not the right person to answer that. Only your friend knows. But how? She's... So I told Karzeda about my wife and about the agony of losing her. All the things I'd hoped for, things we could do as a family, 
were no longer possible. The chasm of remorse threatened to swallow me whole. I couldn't imagine things getting better. Not then, not ever. But I was still alive. Unlike my wife, I still had a future. Didn't that obligate me to move forward, to find meaning in being left behind, and try to fulfill what she wanted for me? Didn't that apply to Karzeda? I think that applies to everyone in this situation. You want me to go with you? To find that flower, I mean? Maybe finding it would give him the answers he needed. I mean, it's worth a shot, yeah? It might do, it might do. Some more stats? I do like that we get stats from this, I really do. So, episode 7, Answers in the Forest. Who is that? Do you think we can find the flower? That sounds like a good idea. Karzeda spoke haltingly, as if remembering the times he shared with his beloved friend. She'd always loved flowers. Tempil was a land forged by its mines, and its climate wasn't suitable for flowers. But that wasn't going to stop her. I mean, from what we saw of it, it was lush and green. I would imagine it would be suitable for flowers. As if that thread of memory had unspooled another, Karzeda said that his friend mentioned having a secret flower garden, but she hadn't told him the location, so he wasn't sure where to begin looking. Sometimes she'd head out to a forest near Folka. If the garden's anywhere, it's probably somewhere in there. It might be a long shot, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't try. I drained the last of my glass. We stepped out of the tavern. The rain had stopped. The air was humid, but the sun was a welcome sight after the rain. I squinted up at the brilliant blue sky. Oh dear God, I hate humid air. It's so suffocating and sticky and... Ah. There, arcing over the forest, was a large rainbow. Well, that would be pretty at least. Take your mind off the humid air. The horrible, sticky, humid air. Anyway, over to Ferry now. Where were we with Ferry anyway? Let's actually read this one because I kind of forgot. Ferry encounters a woman sewing in a blanket in Seed Hollow Central Plaza. Woman Melfira says the blanket is a gift from her beloved, or for her beloved. Ferry takes a seat beside Melfira to watch her work. Melfira, who was all smiles, sighs out of the blue. How does this lead to a boss, though? I have to play as her now. Oh dear. It's going to be interesting. Is something wrong? Such a forlorn expression didn't match Malfira's cheerful disposition. Oh, sorry to worry you. It's nothing I would bother a stranger over. Malfira forced a grin and stretched the throw across her lap. It's just, I had hoped to use warming thread on this little project. What kind of thread? Warming thread? I didn't even know there were different types of thread. Is, is warming thread an actual thring? Thring, yeah. Thing. That's the word I was going for. Thring. But according to Malfira, there was a type of insect native to Fondum whose silk was imbued with magic. Items made from this silk were said to retain a comfortable warmth all year round. I'm going to take that as a no, then. I, I, I doubt that's a thing in our world. Yeah. If only I could get to Fondum on my own. And then there's the matter of tracking the insect. Her smile never quavered, but the way her eyebrows stitched together ever so slightly covertly signaled her true disappointment. I fancy some quavers now. It's a type of crisp or chips if you're from other parts of the world. I could do it for you. I know I look young, but I'm a veteran Skyfarer. I put my hands on my hips and puffed out my chest, a posture I hoped would inspire confidence. Did it though? Oh, that's sweet. But it was just a silly thought. My fault for having unrealistic expectations, really. 
From her tone alone, I could tell the pose did not, in fact, inspire confidence. Later, after a quick discussion with the captain, we decided to head to Fondam anyway. I needed Melfira to finish her blanket. I just didn't understand why yet. Hmm, interesting. Okay, let's do this. Okay. Controlling Ferry. Ferry, a young Irun from an island shrouded in mist, passed away a long time ago and became a ghost. You know, as you do. With her spirited pets by her side, she's a whip wielding powerhouse. Take advantage of her whip's long reach and hold square to deliver a barrage of blows. I use her as a healer. One of her pets will be summoned on the last hit. Or triangle to unleash a storm of blows over a wide area. If any pets are present on the battlefield, they'll hop in on the beatdown. According to Sierra, the insect in question nests atop the local wildlife. But there's a rumor a vicious monster also makes its home here. Stay on your toes. Those look like fire spirits. Uh, we better get them before they uh, get us! Miserable no miss! Me. Uh, they're uh, using it! Time! Uh, uh, hello! Uh, you're yeah. burning! Yeah. Ah, I can work with stay away from that one when it's doing that. Oh. It's kind of cool. It's kind of cool. So we're here again. Ugh, it's so hot. I feel like my sweat is sweating. Why are we going through the trouble again? Sorry. I just wanted to put a smile on Melfira's face. She looked so... I don't know... forlorn? But it was your first time meeting her, wasn't it? Who's she to you? Hmm... I know it's a weird connection, but her name... It sounded like my sister's. I wonder... Could it actually be her sister? Hmm... Let's just run all the way down now. We should be able to, I feel. Looks like someone wants to fight. Let's teach them not to butt in. How's that feel? I don't think I've got a quest or anything to try and get all the wyverns. More wyverns. Momo, you bring up the rear. Over here, you dunce! No running for me! It's all right, Nicola. I'll protect you from the mean monsters. Is that one of the little ghost pets? I forgot the names of them. Someone will let me know eventually. Eventually. What's that? Burn! Look out! It's a monster in disguise! Monsters in disguise! You must be that vicious monster we heard about. If you thought you could get a leg up on us, you have another thing coming. Now, get Get whipped. I can work with this. I'll protect you. Get them. Well done. Soul Conjurer still got it. Heads up, guys. Got it. I'll keep a watchful eye out. Keep an eye on him. Keep an eye on him. He's doing his lightning. Whoop. Steady. Looking good. Like clockwork. Whoa! What did I get hit by? Try to keep up. Guys, didn't go as well as I hoped. Looking good. Just like Out of practice. Now or never. Now you're speaking my language. Leave it to me. Yeah, done. Da 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 da. And I level up though. Nice. Another one of the books. Now we can find that bug in peace. Oh. Hmm. I thought I had to find so the guys, bug. Ready for treats? Is this what you were looking for? I proudly displayed the hard-won thread to a surprised and overjoyed Malfira. We did it, everyone. 
My word, you really are a Skyfarer, aren't you? I'm also a ghost. Yep. She took the spool for a closer look. Yes, this is the genuine article. I can't accept this for free. Let me see what money I have on me. From her purse, she pulled a single, unfamiliar coin. I knew from its extravagant design that it wasn't in circulation anywhere near Seed Hollow, but it looked valuable all the same. I refused the gesture. Retrieving the thread was my decision. I wanted to see that blanket finished. A reward was never part of the equation. Well, seeing the blanket finished is surely the reward. Melfira's grin bloomed into a full belly laugh. She told me I was a strange girl. Laughing with her, I replied that I had met Stranger. Oh, indeed. We got an extra slot. That's cute. That's cute. Don't just drop me here. You confused me for a moment. Need something? Yes, another fate episode, please. So, we're going to get another slot with Yodarha as well. All right, so... Yeah, basically just this one is what we've got. So, the hottest fishing spot. Oh, instantly my head starts just tingling. Just, just ever so slightly, just a tingle. The pain. After some consideration, I decided I would test my mettle against this so-called fisher god. The captain, Lyria, and Vern wanted to help out too. I asked around town where I might find such a rival, but he proved to be as mythical as his title suggested. Rumor had it that he appeared at ponds, peaks, and valleys. The others garnered about the same information, which only further piqued my interest. No matter who we asked, we could not catch the proverbial tale of the Fisher God. All we learned was that he was skilled, able to catch ten fish with one cast, yada yada, and any new species he caught would be named after him. Meaning there were lots of little demigods swimming around now. Yeah, the old called Fisher God or something? With only tales of his escapades to feed us, and no concrete info, we grew weary. You can't sustain a healthy rivalry on rumor after all. Oh, indeed. We needed to change our approach and re-examine the facts. Lure the Fisher God out. All of the stories were about places he visited, meaning he'd never been spotted in town. With that in mind, we enlisted Sierra Carte to speed up the investigation. Sure enough, after a few days' time, she gave us a map dotted like it had the chicken box. There were stamps on ponds and lakes, glaciers and volcanoes, and even a poisonous swamp. All of them locations where he'd been spotted. So, the old fart got around, did he? Good to know he had an adventurous streak. After staring at the map for a while, I realized there was one place conspicuously without a stamp. It was the most dangerous island of all, known for the molten lava covering its surface. Going off my hunch, Sierra Carte did a little more digging around, and we learned a man with a fishing rod chartered a ship there a few days ago. Oh, there we go. Odd place to go fishing, though. The chase was on. It begins. Keep up if y'all can! <laughs> <laughs> now, where's this fisher god? We'll do the same as what we did on ferries, just make a beeline for the end. Ah, we're monsters! That's no good. Did we wake the spirits of this land? Miserable mist! Mm. That's the sauce! Are you really gonna fish in a dangerous place like this? Of course! We're not dealing with your average angler here. This is a fisher god we're after. Now, he should have left supplies or tracks or something. Keep your eyes peeled yeah. for him. Okay, but we better be- ah! Don't scare me like that! I was tempted to get the shiny, but then that what? thing appeared. What? Let the camera move. That was weird. Careful now! Those spirits look angry! Those are the ones that explode if you beat them too hard. Needles. Watch out for the shoot! Oh, we've come, come pretty far. Guess what? The Good doctor you. ordered. Killing me. Just a matter of time before we're there. Too now hop to it. Out of practice. I'm gonna get oh, no. Now if I were a fisher god, this is probably the bait I'd use. Just a hunch though. I got it at least. I got the shiny. Whoa! I see somebody! 
Daddy, maybe it's the Fisher God. Very well, could be. Give him a hello and see what's up. He's fishing in the lava or the magma or whatever. What are you doing, mate? Hey there. Can we talk a minute? Well, all right then. Hey, mister. What the heck are you doing out here? It really does make sense of the name of this episode, though. The hottest fishing spot. It's like it really is. You're in a volcano. <laughs> What's it look like? I'm fishing. What fish? You might catch a few rocks of anything at all. I doubt even that because they'd be molten. We fish, therefore they are. It's the deepest waters what hide the greatest prizes. Are you okay? The proverb left his lips like a right prophet. This had to be our fisher god. Or a crazy guy. Uh, I still don't get how fish could survive in lava. And that's your problem. What? His answer was cryptic, but it had its own logic. The Captain, Lyria, and Vern cocked their heads to the side in confusion. Was there some kind of lava fish? Clear water or molten rock. Catch the rod and catch the fish. <laughs> Truer words were never spoken, friend. Yep. But wouldn't your, your fishing line melt? Do you have a special fishing rod? I <laughs> guess I've learned me something over the years. Those unblinking eyes. That unrelenting hunger for the catch. His tools were top-notch. More importantly, however, he had the aura of a man born to hunt the seas. But I didn't come to admire him. May we presume you are the Fisher God? And to what do I owe the accusation? The accusation? What do you say to a little fish-off betwixt the two of us? Betwixt. Ah, now there's a song to my ears. It would be my honor. And thus, the net was cast. Oh. I'm gonna have to wait to find out what happens. Because that's it for the, um... Episodes then, isn't it? It made sense why Yoraha and Ferries episodes had to wait until now because of the locations we went to. That made sense. Like, we had to wait until we'd been to the Volcano Island before we could do those episodes. But Eugens and Reckhams? I don't see why we had to wait. Didn't make sense to me. Didn't make sense Please at all. Again. But that's us going to be done for this part. In the next part, we'll see about heading to st heading to Stormseed Hollow Castle was what I was was gonna say. No. We'll get ready to storm Seed Hollow Castle. I'll just read what it says. It's easier, isn't it? Dear, oh dear. What, what's going on with my mind? I don't know. Look, I know we're in a hurry and all, but we gotta make sure we're prepared, too. That's what I was gonna say we were gonna do. Like, because we're gonna go up there, but there's there's a marker over here, which we'll check in the next part. Ta-da for now.